Lizanne, first of all, great to have you here. Even what Rick just pointed out, these 1% moves in the dollar, we often only see that during times of like flat out panic, like March 2020. So what would you, your overall advice or reaction here be for investors? Well, it, your, your tease was not quite uh, accurate. I, I, that was in the context of what rebalancing via volatility allows investors to do. I, I think, you know, stepping in on a day like today is is pretty treacherous unless you're an incredibly nimble trader. And I, I don't make recommendations from a trading perspective. But, yeah, you know, the, the, the dollar surge today took out the the highs from, I think, 2015 or 2016 yields firmly above 3 percent, as you've been touching on the horrific combo of, uh, of weaker productivity and higher unit labor costs. Uh, as much as, as Powell tried to, to talk down the likelihood of recession, I, I think the, the needle is um, firmly pointing more in that direction than mm -hmm. on a soft landing. And I think yesterday was, was more of a short covering counter trend rally. I think today is more of the within trend uh, weakness that we're experiencing as the market just starts to discount something a little bit worse than a soft landing. So do I just move to the sideline? I mean, this is the peculiar thing. You know, you people feel more comfortable on the sidelines, even though inflation's 8 percent. You can't stay on the sidelines forever uh, in that kind of well, environment, by, can you? By sidelines, if, if that's suggesting, if the question is, should investors just get out, neither get out nor get in are investing strategies. Uh, all that is is gambling on moments in time. I, I don't know any successful investor that did it by get in, get out. It's a disciplined process over time. So it also is a function of what your own risk tolerance is. If you have a very high risk tolerance and you've got a long-term time horizon and you're you're not looking to start to live on the income associated with a portfolio, yeah, the days like today, weeks like this week, months like the past month give you an opportunity, but it depends on who you are as an investor. If you're retired and you're living off your nest egg and you can't afford to lose any of the principal, then that story in terms of what to do is entirely different. So there's no there's no one answer to what should investors do here. It depends on the investor. Lizanne, I love to sort of just get a reality check when it's possible on days like today. If investors are looking up today and haven't followed every tick and action except for seeing perhaps the closing action yesterday and then looking at today, fundamentally, what changed? Yes, we got the productivity numbers and the unit costs. And so perhaps that helped us change a tone. But really, if the S&P 500 was at 4202 when Powell started his presser and now we're sitting at 4141, we're really not so far off from yesterday. Is this really pointing to a recession to some of your, your earlier comments here? Are we well, just sort of washing out a little bit of what was overdone yesterday? Oh, well, I, I think what happened in the in the lead into yesterday as well as yesterday may be best described as a bit of a, you know, in advance sell on the rumor, meaning of a 75 basis point hike and then buy on the news of the reality of Powell pushing back on on 75. I think the the setup in addition to that for yesterday was at least attitudinal measures of sentiment had gotten really, really washed out. And that sometimes represents just that, a setup. Even if it's not overtly positive news, if it's something that's less negative, you can get that kind of counter trend pop on the upside. But to your point, the, the fundamentals of the economy haven't really changed. I think there was a lot of short covering that uh, seemed to be apparent yesterday, and and now we're um, sort of reaping the other side of that with the uh, the weakness. But I do think that the sentiment environment, which has been less discussed, was also a setup for a rally day. And quite frankly, having huge rallies within bear markets is actually quite common. So to to see the kind of action like we saw yesterday is actually very much in keeping with uh, the history of bear markets.